It's been a little over a month since the train derailed in East Palestine, Ohio and spilled lots and lots of vinyl chloride into the environment, into the smoke in the air and uh, polluting the air, polluting the ground around it. And you know, the, the latest update on this is there really isn't much of an update um, as we probably would know or at, as we would probably suspect they don't really want that in their soil around there. So they're trying to take up the soil and bring it to surrounding states. And of course, the surrounding states don't want that either. So there's lawsuits involved. Really long term, we don't know what the ramifications of the chemical spill in East Palestine, Ohio are going to be. We do know that they've allegedly had dozens or even hundreds of animals die. Uh, the streams where the fish and plant life are are not thriving. Um, Actually, they're doing just the opposite. And there's people that are claiming that they have raspy coughs and they're having health problems. We do know that vinyl chloride is not good for you. There's a list of things, a litany of things that can, health problems that it can cause. And we're not gonna go through it all, but trust me, it's, it's very hazardous, it's very dangerous. I guess the crux of what I'd like to say is, have we reached the time in this country where we can no longer rely on the public water supply to be safe? Or do we have to take matters into our own hands to make sure that it's safe? For instance, if we live on a well, then it's our obligation to make sure that that water is safe, bacterially pure as well as, as uh, chemically pure. But in the city, they're delivering the water it's the city's job to make the water bacterially pure. And, you know, for the most part, they do a really, really good job at that with chlorine and chloramine. Although those are two chemicals that we find aren't really good for us either. But what about all these other chemicals that we're hearing about now, these PFOAs, PFAS, these forever chemicals that just aren't going away? You know, since World War II, in the industrial age, we've developed probably 30,000 plus new chemicals. Many of these chemicals are finding their way into our water supplies. The, we do have the technology today to deal with that. For instance, carbon filtration is very effective at removing many of these VOCs or volatile organic chemicals and chlorine and chloramine and things like that. But if you're really concerned about the quality of your water, the process that takes out the largest spectrum of contaminants is reverse osmosis. Some people are opting for whole house reverse osmosis systems. I want you to, I want to plant a seed and you think about it. The city produces our water and they kill the bacteria for the most part, but over 95%, maybe it's 99% of the water that is delivered by a city is not for internal consumption. It's used in industrial processes. It's used for fighting fires, hosing down streets, watering gardens, and many other things that are not related to internal consumption. Are we to believe that the city should treat 100% of their water so that it's to be internally consumed when a large majority of it is not? And maybe it would make it cost prohibitive to do that with all the chemicals and things that are now in the water. I don't have the answer, but it's something to think about. I live in the city and I have taken those matters into my own hands. I have a water treatment system that's going to deliver safe, bacterially pure water. And anyone can have that. The only question is the cost. Who has to bear the cost?